Okay, let's do a second numerical and this will be, if you guessed it, on the single slit. Let's consider the same example as before. Let's say again I have a screen distance to be um, one meter and in the single slit, remember, I am now worried about the width of the slit itself. Now, the width of the slit which I call as A, if you compare that with D, which is the distance between two slits, clearly from the diagram and from your intuition, you can sort of say that, you know, uh, this has to be way smaller than the distance. Even my diagram, if you look at it, look at that pre diagram which I had drawn before, this is the slit width, which is going to be A. Clearly, that slit width is way smaller than this distance between the slits. So, for my experiment, hypothetical experiment, let's say that slit width is 0.1 millimeter. I'm making it 10 times smaller. Let's just do that. Okay? Now, same lambda as before, 500 nanometers, which of course I have to convert to SI. And now I ask myself, where are the minimas? You know, remember, in the diffraction, it's the minimas that matter. And to pull back our diagram of the plot, here it is, this handy plot, which helps me a lot. It's always lambda by A and lambda by A apart. Right? So that's where my first minima is going to be. So the minimas, which I do with green. Wait, where is my green? Ah, there it is. Okay, so the minimas, where they are going to be, uh, they're going to be, the first minima, theta 1, is going to be at lambda by A, and that's going to be 500 into 10 to the minus 9, divided by A, which is 0 0.1 into 10 to the minus 3. So theta 1 is going to be 5,000, you tend to the minus six, or it's going to be at five milli rads. Again, to convert that into degrees, it's going to be five into 180 divided by pi. Ah, okay. So five into 180 divided by pi. So that's 286. Point six into 10 to the minus 3 because it's a milli and so if I shift I get about 0 0.29 degrees ah oh, that's 10 times higher than what I got before but yeah so 0 0.29 degrees it's going to be uh, you know from the center and next one is going to be of course twice that value you can see that so that's 0 0.58 degrees. And the next one, it's going to be at three times that value. So 29 times three gives you 0 0.87 degrees. Okay, and if you want the linear width, it's going to be at... Um, ah, okay. So the linear width is going to be at, if you multiply by D, so linear width x1, minima, I'll just do it with green, x1, it's going to be this one, 5 millirads, into 1, so that's going to be 5 millimeters. And next one is going to be at 10 millimeters, and next one at 15 millimeters, and so on. So if I were to draw a plot, how that plot look like. Let me draw that plot here. I'll do it in a new page. So that plot would pretty much look like this. Here's my single slit. And this has the teeny weeny slit width, which is 0.1 millimeters. Everything is in millimeters. And here is my screen distance, which is one meter. Again, it's not to scale. If this is 0.1 millimeters, if this is one meter, they will not, you cannot scale it this way. And you see that uh, the first minima is at five millimeters. So here is that is. So here's my center, zero. 
So at 5 millimeters, I'm going to get the first minima. And at 10 millimeters, I'm going to get the next one. And so my diffraction pattern, the single slit pattern, is going to be somewhat like this. I'll have the maxima at the center. I'll have minima. And then I'll have another maxima somewhere over here, right in between these two. I don't know exactly where it is. We can't say it is right in between 5 and 10, giving you a 7.5 millimeter. It may not be exactly. So we'll just ignore that. And forget about the next one. So it's going to be somewhat this way. This. And this way. Over here. And like so. And like so. Whatever. Okay. If you ask me what is the width of this one, you can clearly see it's 10 millimeters. My God, that's 10 millimeters wide. Compare that to the interference pattern which we got. You can see that each one is 0.5 millimeters wide. And look at this. This is 10 millimeters wide. That's huge. You're going to see the consequence of that pretty soon, by the way. So this is 10 millimeters wide. And if you want to know what is the angular width of that, and if you want to know what the angular width of this, here is the angular width. And that angular width is going to be, um, is going to be 5 millirads this way and 5 millirads this way from the center. So it's going to be 10 millirads. And the 10 millirads corresponds to 0.29 degrees this way. So it's this is 0.29 degrees. This is 0.29 degrees. So the whole angle is going to be 0.58 degrees. So the central maxima is huge. It has this huge width. And these ones are going to have about 0 0.29, 0 0.29 this way. But the central maxima, wow, that's just that's just huge. And so now comes an interesting question. What if you want to look at the actual pattern due to the double slit? Well, each single slit are going to give you this monstrous diffraction pattern. And overlapped in this monstrous diffraction pattern, you will have these double slit interference patterns. So the total pattern has to be a superposition of these two. Now, these are not to scale. Remember, this is one millimeter over here. And this whole thing is about you know, from 1.5 to 1.5, about 3 millimeters. So just think, in this big, badass central maxima of the diffraction pattern, how many such double slit interference patterns are going to fit? Well, that's easy. Since each one is having a width, so each one is having a width of about 0.5, you can see that, 0.5 millimeters is the width of that, and this one has 10 millimeters, so 10 divided by 0.5, 20. 20 such pat double slit patterns are going to fit in this big maxima. So now comes the most glorious moment in our life where we can now draw the entire pattern. And let's do that pretty quickly before the battery in my phone dies out. So I'm just now going to draw it this way. So here is going to be that big diffraction pattern like so uh, over here and it's like this over here i'm only going to draw the central maxima i don't care about the rest ones the big diffraction pattern this is the center and this was where was that this is at five millimeters yeah so this is five millimeters and this is five millimeters and within this there are going to be 20 double slit patterns let me just draw them with blue so um, there's going to be one here, it's going to be like this, and there's going to be one here, and it's going to be like this, and it's going to be like this, and one more, and one more. I haven't even actually counted them then. I don't know whether they're actually 20 or not. You can count them, but I don't have much time to do, do this. So you're going to get someone like this. And then you're going to get some over here as well. And you're going to get some over here as well inside them. So this is the total pattern that you get due to the single slit and double slit. And remember, this each one over here has a width of about 0.5. 
millimeters, which is counted. So now you get the entire picture of the single slit and the double slit interference pattern. So now I have given you all the tools that you need in order to understand the question that we asked ourselves in the beginning of the previous video. The question was why the interference fringes are dying out? Why aren't they having all the same intensity? And the answer lies in diffraction of course. Here I show you again the diffraction pattern in white. Clearly you can make out the broad central maxima over here and then a first minima over here and then you can see the first maximas over there. Alright, now when I consider along with this the double slit pattern which I've shown in the yellow, you can clearly see that the fringes of the double slit are also dying out and the reason is because of the central maxima of the diffraction pattern. So the middle, the central yellow fringe, the central fringe is getting the maximum intensity and you can see as you go away from the center because the central maxima of the diffraction pattern is dying out, the fringes intensity also keep dying out. So the total pattern looks like this. Now you can clearly relate this with the diagram that I'm showing you. And you can see that once the fringes die out, they are dying out in the minimas, you can again see the fringes and these fringes are due to the first maxima. Now these are usually very low intensity. In fact, you can make out from the picture that these fringes over here are having low intensities. I did not show you those fringes in the beginning for a good reason. You would have no clue what these are. You can only explain them once we learn diffraction. So now you can sleep well and you can understand the entire pattern.